right, we've got a good show here today. The markets are doing what I expected them to do. I was expecting some weakness today, but the big question is today going to be a turnaround day. Are we potentially going to go up tomorrow or further down? I'm going to explore the bear versus bull case. I'm going to give you guys some fresh perspective. We're going to consider the notes of the FOMC meeting, what we were able to draw out of that uh, dialogue, and how that directs the markets in the coming months. I'm also going to be recapping recent predictions to see how they went and share some of my top trades with you guys. We'll take a peek at the heat map of the S&P 500 to see who's winning and who's losing. This is the Stocks with Josh show. As always, I thank you guys for hitting the like already and if you're new to this page and you need to get insights and price predictions on some of the most popular stocks being traded on Wall Street then you got to hit that subscribe button and hit the YouTube all notification bell because I'm making predictions on stock and crypto every day I have not been covering crypto as much as I would like somebody called me out in the comment section the truth is crypto has been down it's been a little bit sleepy I'm gonna be covering it more because I do keep an eye on it I haven't really been doing too much crypto swing trading you guys know that I've been focused on some of the bigger plays that I'm in, Apple, Tesla, NVIDIA, and a couple others. We're going to dive into that today. So let's get right into the heat map of the S&P 500. Who's winning? Who's losing? We see that money is still flowing into healthcare and energy. J&J &J is up today as well as ExxonMobil. I'm not going to get into them deep, but I told you that the top of the channel that Exxon's been in for a long time is right around $118 to $120. I don't have a strong opinion of where Exxon's going to go, but I just want to point out that it's very possible that we're going to come back and touch the top of the channel. If it were to significantly break above and close above that channel, then it would be telling us that it's going to go on a much bigger bull run. I don't really have an opinion on that. I know that we came up, hit the top of that channel, we pulled back a little bit, we could go back up and touch it again, but it's going to be a barrier at 118, 120. That's your price to watch. And then you got J&J. &J. Now, this is actually one of my investments. It's in my long-term portfolio. I'm bullish on this, and I believe that they are going to be having a breakout moment here pretty soon. I think that we're watching for a close above $174.50. Now, in a recent video when I covered this last, I told you guys that the trade range was between $174 and $165.40. And you know what? Look at that chart. It's been exactly between that spot. It went up to the price target that I gave. It came back to the support that I gave. And then it moved back up and failed at resistance. But like I said, if we get a close above 174.50, then I think we're off to the races and I think we'll move up to $180 pretty soon after that. All right, let's just take a brief moment and explore the bull versus bear case. Are we still in a bull market or are we back in a bear market? That's the big question on the table. Inflation and rate hikes aren't over, warn the Fed. The FOMC notes basically show that the Fed has got strong concern about sticky inflation as well as the commercial real estate and its effect on banks. We know that there is a commercial real estate bubble that is getting ready to pop that's going to be worse than we've ever seen before. That's going to create a big problem for the banks. I've been telling you guys when the banks had their earnings and they looked like they had done pretty good, I told you guys that when money was flowing out of the banks, it just wasn't good. They're the ones that are going to be affected by this big bubble in commercial real estate. The Fed has put it on everyone's radar and said, it's a problem. And when that thing pops, then you're going to see the banks get impacted again. And that's going to lead into your life and my life because when the banks suffer, it causes a massive credit crunch and it affects everything that goes on. And that's what can push us into a recession. Now, if we go to the SPY chart and we want to take a look at the technical bear case, we can clearly see that we've lost momentum. When you're above the 20-day exponential moving average, you're in a bull move. We're beneath it, so that's a big problem. But even worse, over 1,000 companies that trade on the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 have fallen beneath their 50 SMA. So the breadth of the move has really contracted and pulled back from a technical perspective. But now let's kind of discuss the bull case. It's not all sky is falling. The bottom line is that we had been running up for six months a two-month correction where the market pulls back around 8% on the SPY is not ridiculous. And it's not just going to go straight down. It's going to move down in a zigzag fashion. We're going to have down days and up days. And ultimately, it's not going to be until we get to that ascending wedge support line that I showed you guys in a video a couple weeks back. It's not till we get to that spot, which is around an 8% decline in the SPY. It's not until we break beneath that and close beneath that, that we could then begin to even entertain whether or not we're going to be in a prolonged bearish move. More than likely, this is just the correction. And that's going to set us up for some of our biggest trades because 
Apple and Tesla and some other stocks, they've been punished. They've been pushed down to their lows. And for me, it's a buying opportunity. I'm going to cover those with you guys in just a minute. I'm going to take a couple seconds for a station break for the Moomoo Investment app. If you are in Australia or Canada or the U.S., there is an offer for free stock. Here in the U.S., you can get up to 16 free stock as well as a $50 cash bonus for opening up and funding your account. You can pre-register in Canada to be able to make a deposit and trade in the coming days because that's a brand new market for the Moomoo Investment app. And if you click on the link in the top pinned comment, you're going to get all the details of the offer as well as the specifics for your country. You guys know I love Moomoo. I use it every day. We're still in earnings season and I'm watching the earnings calendar on Moomoo each and every day. But if you've been part of this page, you know that the best part of Moomoo is the chat group that I host on the app called Stock Josh Fam. Guys, get your free stock, get your free cash. Come find us on that chat group. We're going to continue to talk stocks and crypto over there after I post this video today. All right, we're going to recap some recent predictions to see how things have been going. Are we on track or are we way off track? Well, let's just start off with HE Hawaii Electric. Yesterday, I told you guys that we needed to sell every pop. If this thing moved up, it was time to sell and short every pop. So when you move up, you go to short it, right? And that's exactly been the right call. I told you guys that we were looking for this thing to fall back to historic support between $12 and $10 and lo and behold, we hit that today. It's moving really fast to the downside. It fell into the 4% level on the RSI, which is absolutely amazing. So when it came down to 10, it popped back up to 12. That was your sell opportunity. Sell every single pop then go short because this is continuing to move down. Now, since we've gotten to the $10 mark, I'm going to tell you guys that the next support now is between $9 and $8. And I think it's clearly moving in that direction. It's way oversold. This is an extremely fast moving play. When it gets down to a very attractive price, I'm going to come out here and tell you guys to load up. Right now, it's going to continue to be short the stock, buy support, sell every pop. That's how it looks to me. Okay, I want to briefly talk about Sound, Soundhound. Quick recap, guys, this hit $2.60 in just the last two days, but it's still struggling to stay above the 200 moving average. It's sitting on the top of the descending channel that I drew for you guys three weeks ago. Now, I want to compare this right now to the last time that the stock price fell down below to $1.60 and then popped back up to $5. What lessons can we learn? Well, if we look at that chart, we see that we broke up like we did recently, and then it moved around eight days sideways and down, and then it had a major move back up. So we're going to be watching to see if it follows suit this time. We're only three days into this recent pop-up. Even if we moved sideways and slightly to the downside, we're going to be watching to see this thing break up again above that 200-day moving average and ultimately come under and hit that 50-day moving average, where I've told you is the second place that we'd want to be profit takers. But from the bearish perspective on this stock, we want to be careful because if this thing were to fall back beneath $1.80, I think it negates our game plan. It changes the game plan and we got to let the whole thing go and we got to look for where it settles in the coming days. But personally, I'm optimistic about this stock for the same reasons that others have been optimistic about it because it's AI season. These guys are a good AI company and I think they're going to increase their revenues and do well and we're going to see a lot of volatility in the stock. We're going to see opportunities I believe to sell this again at three dollars but we have to always be mindful and keep an eye out for a breakdown. I believe that anything beneath a dollar eighty would be a breakdown and I wouldn't want to hold past that point. All right let's get into Tesla and what's going on with the Tesla chart. Guys for one month straight since July 19th Tesla's been pulling back. In that time frame, it's lost $78 per share. It's down currently 26%. Now, personally, I believe that we've entered into a potential trend reversal moment based on the candle that I gave you guys yesterday. I expected it to dip down today, and I'm expecting the next couple days to be green candles. But we got to keep a sober view of the charts. Where could this possibly go? Now, because we're 26% off of the high, I think that's pretty severe. That's a good spot for this to bounce. I'm expecting an upward move. But if for some reason there's something in these markets that I'm not seeing and this breaks down today, where could it go? The next level of support is all the way down at $211. Now, when we came down beneath 223, when we were around 222, I entered into some call options. I'm going to be holding those and looking for these candles to turn green and looking to make some money. But if it were to break down, the next level of support would be 211. I'm not expecting that right now. But man, we've learned that Tesla can move 
fast. When we get this reversal, I'm expecting a move all the way back up to $264. So even if you got in today and we did have another flash down, it would be scary, but the bottom line is I think we're ultimately going to quickly rise back up at least at $245 in the next week. Take a quick look for yourself at the RSI on the daily candlestick chart for Tesla. We are very close to touching oversold the way that we did before when we got a reversal. And if we go over to the MACD, we see that we're at the negative 8% line, which is also the same exact place that we were before when we got a reversal. So I'm watching for the MACD to flatten out and begin to curl up. Up. We had a huge opportunity for the last six months to make money off of Tesla. And so, yes, if this thing were to get down to 211, I'd simply load up. But that's what I'm doing. This is not a suggestion for you to buy, sell or hold. OK, let's get into the Apple chart. Similarly with Apple, you can see based on my prediction that I made at the beginning of this week that Apple's come down to the price point that I expected. Even when we had that one green day, I told you guys that was a fake out and that we would be around $174. We came down and we touched that today right into the buy zone. Now, for the last 30 days, Apple's come down 12.44%, which is a pretty nice pullback for Apple. The volume today is flat, which means that the momentum to the downside is largely slowing. But just like Tesla, I want to give you guys the next level of support that it's possible for us to hit on Apple, and that's $172.77. If we do any more to the downside, it's likely to be a bounce right at that spot. This is also a buy zone for me for Apple. And personally, for me, I believe that by the end of day on Friday, we're going to see an Apple price around $176, which will put it back above the FIB level, which is also above its previous local high. And remember, what once was resistance now becomes support. And so I'm expecting a turnaround on Apple as well. This is a buy zone for me. All right, that's all I'm going to cover for you guys today. Uh, I'm going to cover NVIDIA before their earnings this coming Wednesday. I'll just tell you guys right now, I'm not expecting any big firework move to the upside on NVIDIA. I think largely, I think we're going to be moving sideways on NVIDIA. I told you guys that 448 would be strong resistance. I think it's going to continue to operate as resistance. We may come back up and bounce against that price, but ultimately I think we're going to move sideways and down and we're going to hit this upward ascending trend line that I drew for you guys weeks ago. That's basically my prediction for NVIDIA, but we'll look at it more closely as we get closer to earnings this coming Wednesday. I want to just leave with this comment. One of the things that worked out the best for us this week was showing patience, which always reminds me of my favorite Warren Buffett quote, which I actually am misquoting, but I'm just giving you the gist of it. Warren Buffett says the stock market is all about money transferring from impatient hands to patient hands. We showed patience this week. Now we're taking a risk position in the markets so and we're going to see if it pays off for us. That's what I'm doing. I hope you guys are making some money this week. As always, thanks for hitting the like. If you guys enjoyed these technicals and you want to see how these predictions work out Friday, Monday, and Tuesday going into next week, then you got to hit the subscribe button and the YouTube all notification bell. After this video posts, I'm going to go over to Moomoo and we're going to continue to talk over there. As always, peace and blessings. Take care.